Hi everyone, I'm very pleased to be invited to present some of my research to you today. In my PhD I investigate the art and graphic design of Karl Gerstner, more precisely the approach of his so-called programs. Therefore, his biographical career and the contemporary historical context also play a role. Gerstner, who began his career in the post-war period, summarized his design approach with the formula instead of solutions for problems, programs for solutions, thus corresponding to a way of thinking during the late 50s to the 1960s characterized by systematization, computerization or cybernetics. In this lecture I will take a closer look at Gerstner's publishing activities and the role of the book medium in his work as an artist and graphic designer. That's why I chose to title my lecture Publishing and the Book as a Medium in Karl Gerstner's Practice. The number of publications alone illustrates the importance of publishing in Gerstner's career. By now I have counted around 50 publications that appeared between 1957 and 2010. Therefore, the medium has also become relevant for my research. It is my biggest source right after his archival material. In his publications, Gerstner pursues different intentions, which of course cannot be clearly separated from each other, so I'll present them in a simplified way. Der Künstler und die Mehrheit, The Artist and the Majority, for example, is a collection of his essays on art theory. In 2M, he analyzes Marcel Duchamp's last painting. Both works pursue a scientific or theoretical approach. The best known example is probably Kalte Kunst, Cold Art, but unfortunately it's a very expensive rarity. The theoretical work Do-It-Yourself Kunst, Do-It-Yourself Art, is also of interest, but I will discuss it later. In design theory, there is the new graphic art, which he publishes together with his friend and business partner, Markus Kutter, his central work, Designing Programs, which I also come back to, and his Compendium für Alphabeten, Compendium for Literates. Die Formen der Farben, the forms of color, and der Geist der Farbe, the spirit of colors, are catalogs of works in which Gerstner devotes a considerable amount of space to the intellectual context of selected series of his works. In Ideen, Skizzen und Bilder, Sketches and Pictures, Gerstner publishes early drawings of some of his artworks, thus specifically addressing the genesis of the works. In some publications, he provides almost didactic decryptions of the works. In the early 2000s, Gerstner published two retrospectives, one for his graphic work, one for his art. Both have an extensive autobiographical section, Biographies can be found in several exhibition catalogues, as is usual in art publications, but there are some examples where the biographies are more extensive. On the occasion of his first retrospective in 1978, for example, or with very personal comments also on the occasion of the exhibition Freunde, Friends, Freund. There are publications that can be seen as an artistic work themselves. Spiegelbilder, for example, mirror images, a catalog with original prints, as well as a numbered and signed edition of Color Lines, or the book object Color Sounds. Although I do not count them among Gerstner's own publications, I would like to refer to some of his commission works from the field of graphic design real quick. The so-called Basel political writings, shown as a reprint here, were designed by Gerstner. Exhibition catalogues such as Ars Multiplicata, or the writings of Markus Kutter, Schiff nach Europa, I would like to focus on three aspects that I consider particularly interesting in the context of Gerstner's publication activity. Firstly, the exposure of art and design methodology. Secondly, the phenomenon of publishing as artistic practice. And thirdly, the connection between his publishing activity and his autobiography. The publications, which I would assign to art and design theory, always contain some of Gerstner's own works, but the major part represents other artists and designers. Thus, they will serve particularly to convey a kind of structure of thought or intellectual cosmos. His centerpiece in this context is designing programs, in which he assembles four essays of his own, but also presents an interdisciplinary canon of design methods from graphics, photography, art, literature and music. For example, Based on Fritz Zwicky's method of morphology, Gerstner presents a method to develop a word mark. In the first step, the task is decomposed into all designable parameters, for example, typeface, color, size, proportion, etc. In the second step, all possible values of these parameters are collected. 
The values for the parameter typeface are, for example, sans serif, Roman, German, some other, or combined. According to Gerstner, the resulting matrix is a designing automatic from which solutions can now be combined. The work mark for the Cologne Furniture Store Intermöbel, for example, could be traced back to the following parameters. The crucial idea is in the converging letters R and M, as indicated by the field D43, something replaced. Gessner repeatedly refers to the morphology in his works, and the matrix is the program. In the field of art theory, Gessner publishes Do-It-Yourself Kunst, Do-It-Yourself Art, a small book that has rather amazing parallels to designing programs. Again, Gessner compiles an overview of design methods, only in this case for the field of art. A large part is specifically about literary text production, and again, here's an example. As a method, Gessner introduces George Brecht's universal machine. In a flat wooden box, countless small objects are drawn on the bottom. Additionally, there are some small objects inside it, like a match, a bar button, a marble, a clip. To activate the machine, you close the box and shake it. The resulting constellation of objects and images in the box is the starting point for your associations. So, you kind of provoke the coincidence in an experimental arrangement, which you also can call a program. Finally, Gerstner uses one of his own artworks to illustrate his idea of a democratic and participatory art. He didactically prepares his work Algorithmus, Algorithm, and provides an instruction for a handcrafted reconstruction. The title of the book says it all, do it yourself. The program here is a grid from which stencils can be cut out and combined to create variable images. Despite the didactics, do-it-yourself kunst tends to be a work of art, in my opinion. Especially if we consider the context of its creation. It is published by the Cologne-based gallery Der Spiegel. Since its founding in the 1950s, the gallery has belonged to the so-called progressive galleries and has continuously published art editions with prices being based on everyday objects, such as LP records. I have already mentioned the catalog Spiegel Bilder. The name refers to the Galerie der Spiegel and was published on the occasion of an exhibition of Karl Gerstner. The catalog consists of 12 original prints and all 250 copies are signed. The relationship between book and object becomes even clearer in his work Color Sounds. Here, Gerstner investigates the reception of colors. The unchanging composition, as well as the subtitle Homage to the Homage to the Square, are a clear reference to the work of Josef Albers. Gerstner's color sound paintings are approximately 1 meter 10 in height and width and consist of painted panels. The realization of a book object makes the work literally tangible and allows a completely different approach to the work. The object also shows that Gerstner's publications reveal different intentions. Instead of letting the object speak for itself, he expands it with a didactic text section, thereby providing contextualization and derivation along the way. In my third section, I would like to take a look at the aspect of autobiography, as it becomes apparent that Gerstner's publishing activity is of great importance for the reception of his work. Despite Gerstner's relevance to the genesis of graphic design and concrete art, his own publications on one hand and the specific research on the other hand is in a distinctly unequal relation to each other. Therefore, we must assume that the reception of Gerstner's work is to a large extent shaped by his own publishing activity. In his essay, The Particular Problem of Graphic Design History, the American curator and design theorist Andrew Blaufeld identifies problem of historiography within the history of graphic design. He criticizes a narrative of graphic design history where all subjects and objects unfold in a linear, chronological fashion segmented through a series of stylistic successions. According to Blaufeld, this practice causes history writing as underwriting. Julia Mehr, head of collections at the Museum für Kunst und Gewerbe, Hamburg, describes this narrowed perspective in her dissertation using the example of the historiography and reception of the new typography, noting a strikingly high overlap between historical representations and the self-representation of the avant-garde. This relationship can, of course, be influenced by an extensive publishing activity. Furthermore, what Blofeld describes as an inherent ephemeral state applies to Gerstner as well. 
the ephemera of many graphic design works leads to the fact that graphic design is not usually collected and archived. This condition of presentness creates an ahistorical sensibility towards the objects and the conditions of their creation and reception. This has consequences for my own research. The archive as a primary source follows an untraceable collection practice and the publications as the secondary source are very likely to follow a strongly subjective autobiographical narrative. I would like to give an example to demonstrate how moments of historiography manifest themselves. In 1955, in the early years of his career, Gerstner wrote the essay Ausblicke in die Zukunft, Prospects for the Future. In it, he presents graphic designs for Geigy, a Basel-based chemical company he worked for. He writes about the attempt to unify and give a typical character to the entire advertising. The works are still far off from the quality of later corporate designs, but in short, this quote describes an early reflection on corporate designs as we understand them today. Later in his career, Gerstner earned great recognition for his in-depth understanding of corporate designs. In his 2001 retrospective, he looked back at his work for Geige and remarked, since there are no concepts, there is no continuity. So he relativized his reflections that clearly emerged in 1955 and must be read as the intellectual basis for his examination in the following decades. Another example. Gessner's activity as an artist and graphic designer sometimes creates unclear dividing lines between the two disciplines. Through his publishing activity, Gessner created a dense network of cross-references in which methodology and conceptual derivations can be lifted out on the one of one discipline and inscribed in the other. The British graphic designer and design theorist Richard Hollis, for example, attributes Gessner's way of thinking to work by Theo van Duisburg and states, Concrete artists who were also graphic designers would divide an area of paper in the same way as they would do on canvas. I think the comparison with van Duisburg is problematic since Gerstner's work must be classified in a such more differentiated way, both in terms of early intellectual models and in terms of a mutual influence of his graphic design and art. Richard Hollis ultimately concludes his essay with another inscription that can be placed neither in the history of art nor in the history of uh, design but refers to Avant-Garde Küche, a cookbook by Gerstner from 1990. On the cover is a slogan which we might put on his 60 years of work, principles, not recipes. To conclude, the books shown here are only the ones I own myself, but maybe enough to give an impression of the extent of Gerstner's publishing activity. His books are about his works, about art in general, about graphic design. He observes from both the practitioner's and the theorist's perspectives. He uses the medium, as he says, as the flip side on his paintings to deepen his thoughts. He turns the medium into art since the medium allows him to realize his idea of democratic and participatory art. He uses the medium to share his way of thinking. As valuable as the published work is for my research, I have to look at it critically. Autobiographical writing always carries a narrative. To depict parallel, interlaced or overlapping actions and processes, events that are being shortened, put into context or embellished. Even Gerstner, who is said to think rationally, cannot free himself from this. Thank you very much.